Hey everybody, Dog Skeleton here, and in this video I wanted to do a bit of a rant on four different MOBA games to give you a comparison and hopefully help you decide uh, which one might be right for you if you are at all interested in these multiplayer online battle arena games. So, the four games we're going to be covering today, uh, I'm pretty sure they're in like the top five most popular, League of Legends, Heroes of the Storm, Defense of the Ancients 2, and Smite. So we'll kind of go down the list there. So getting started with League of Legends, uh, one that probably if you've heard of MOBAs at all, you have heard of this one. I'm pretty sure it's the most popular one out there on the market. In League of Legends, uh, the game almost always revolves around one single map, and that is Summoner's Rift. It's 5v5. Um, kind of uh, similar in nature to the original Defense of the Ancients map back from Warcraft 3. I don't know if anyone still plays that. I'm sure a couple of people do, but... Uh, so in League of Legends, you've got two corners of the map, and it's split down the middle. So in each of those respective corners, you have a base that you have to defend, and a bunch of turrets leading up to that base that you have to take down in order to get at what's called the core. Um, there's also these things called inhibitors, which, when you destroy them, causes your lane to spawn additional minions. So basically, stronger minions that will defeat the other minions from the opposing side and help push the lane. So in all of these mobile games, you uh, have minions spawning. And these minions, uh, at least in League of Legends, are basically just there for experience points and gold pieces. And you use that to buy equipment. So pretty standard right out of uh, the original Defense of the Ancients. Now, of course, in each of these games, you have map objectives. In League of Legends, that would be killing Baron Nasher and the Dragon, which will get you additional buffs. There's also a jungle areas, which you or uh, members of your team can go into to farm gold and uh, additional minor buffs. Uh, but generally speaking, the game has been fairly static over the last few years. Yes, they've made changes to that map, and yes, there's a couple more maps you can play on, like Twisted Tree Line, which is 3v3, but honestly, no one really cares about that. It's all about Summoner's Rift, which means League of Legends is for those who like playing on the same map a thousand times, or more than a thousand times, even. Uh, now, that's not to say it's bad. It's pretty well balanced, and the champions are uh, fairly interesting overall. Uh, there's a ton of them, too. I, I think League of Legends has well over 100 champions at this point. Um, and they've been doing a great job in remaking older champions with newer kits. For instance, one champion, Warwick, used to be um, very cut and dry. He had like an attack speed buff and an ultimate which stuns somebody, but aside from that he basically just runs around and auto attacks people, but the new Warwick kit is actually quite cool. I haven't had a chance to play him, but I did play against him and I got absolutely crushed, which was, it was cool. It was refreshing to see uh, a champion that was pretty much broken before, like unplayable, um, actually become good again. And that, that's not to say Warwick was always bad, but that his kit just wasn't very modern. And in terms of a competitive scene, League of Legends is extremely popular. It's a pretty fun game to watch, and uh, Riot Games, the makers of League of Legends, do throw quite a bit of money at the competitive scene. Now, aside from the staticness of the 5v5 map, one of the biggest problems I have with League of Legends, and probably the defining reason why I more or less left the game, is that the player base is, to be kind, very competitive. So if you're not playing as well as you could, or you're not really working with the team how they want you to work with the team, basically if they want you to do something and you don't do it, or if you mess up an ultimate or anything like that, um, you have a lot of these players out there that are kind of command and control, and they will rail against you for being bad, for being new, blah, blah, blah. Um, even if you play better than them. And uh, just having that kind of overly competitive environment does make it a lot less fun because you're there to play a game and then people are treating each match almost like it's life or death. Like if we lose this, I'm gonna lose $50,000 on my savings account or something like that. And it's just like, come on, man. This is just a game, it's solo queue, you can't expect every player to be super amazing all the time, but um, that's just kind of how it turns out. Uh, 
Of course, if you play with your friends or if you've got a competitive team going on, you don't have that problem because you're always playing with people you know. So next up, Heroes of the Storm. Uh, I think this is the game I personally like best at the moment, because uh, when I do think of mobile games at the moment, I like to think of them a bit more casually um, than in the past. So Heroes of the Storm, made by Blizzard Entertainment, um, also the makers of Warcraft 3, by the way, but they didn't make Defense of the Ancients. That was a custom map for that game that uh, some other people made. Anyway, Heroes of the Storm. Uh, it has kind of a different philosophy in mind. Um, when you are playing Heroes of the Storm, you don't have to farm gold. Uh, experience is shared across the entire team, so everybody on the team is the same level. There's no real such thing as kill stealing in that game. You don't have to donate kills to the main carry, the person who does the most damage and needs gold to be powerful. Um, rather, it's just all about teamwork and completing map objectives. And in Heroes of the Storm, they also keep it fresh because there are many different maps. Uh, I think I would say around 10 right now, where you can uh, basically play on the map. Of course, you still try to destroy the opponent's core, um, but how you do that is a little bit different on each map. So there'll be these map objectives that usually help you push uh, push each of the lanes, so there's still lanes with minions on them, um, and help you push them in so you can destroy the opponent's buildings and eventually the core. Uh, on a couple maps, though, uh, how it works is different. So when you destroy what are called keeps, they would be called inhibitors in League of Legends. They actually uh, affect the map objectives. So there's this one Halloween map where when you destroy a keep, it makes completing each of the map objectives give you one bonus point towards winning the game. So each, play, each team would have like 40 points of health on the core, and the only way to deal damage to them is to capture these map objectives in the center. But if you have a destroyed keep over the opponent, you would get uh, like plus one missile, effectively plus one damage every time you complete one of those map objectives. And yes, those keeps can also respawn. They can be destroyed and reclaimed for your team. But having it work like that is different than when they're permanently destroyed on some of the other maps. So Heroes of the Storm does a good job keeping things fresh by just having multiple maps that are in rotation to play on. Now also in Heroes of the Storm, because there is no gold and all levels on your team are equal, uh, even support heroes, ones that usually heal or give shields to allies, are still quite deadly. Um, like, you can play Tassadar, who is a High Templar from the StarCraft universe, and you can uh, choose talents. So instead of buying items, you upgrade certain abilities as you level up. You can choose Psionic Storm talents in order to do an absolute truckload of damage to your opponent's team. Or you can uh, grab talents that favor uh, making your shields more powerful or giving you more vision on the map or that kind of thing. So as you go through the game, you still customize your hero, but without buying items, you just choose from one of four abilities every few levels. And uh, I, I do like that system. It makes it so that you can play each champion different ways, even if their role was initially defined as support or warrior, which is tank or Assassin, which is uh, kind of damage dealer, high burst potential. Now, it's sort of hard for me to comment on the competitive scene. I haven't really watched too much of it, uh, but I do think of Heroes of the Storm War as a for fun game. Uh, I'm sure it could be played competitively pretty well because it's, it's all about teamwork in that game because there's no going on a killing spree and just destroying the opponent's team with one person. That doesn't really happen. Uh, because your level is tied to your team. So it's either your whole team stomps over the opponent or your whole team gets crushed. And I like that aspect. You can't just have one greedy player. Um, and you have to participate in team fights or going for the map objectives if you want to win um, at any reasonable skill level. So it's kind of nice in that way. You can't just you know be a cheesy player who just goes and gets a bunch of kills. I mean, you can. Like, you can play a stealth champion that... Uh, tries to take people out of the fight, and basically assassin, uh, before the fight starts. But you still have to work as a team, and that's cool. I think that's what um, mobile games should be trying to do best. Okay, so moving on to Defense of the Ancients 2. So this is a uh, basically a follow-up to the original. It's a completely separate game client um, on Steam. Of, of course, free-to-play. All these games are free-to-play uh, with the ability to pay money for premium skins or sometimes champions. Um, 
what's notable about Defense of the Ancients 2 is that it is pretty, I would say cutthroat. They all, they all can be competitive, but Defense of the Ancients 2 is particularly uh, unfriendly to beginners because in Defense of the Ancients, it's really easy to just absolutely scale way beyond the other team in terms of power level. The levels of each champion are individual. Um, it's a good strategy to pick on the weakest player on the opposing team, basically farm them for gold. And yes, you can do that in League of Legends, but I think it's way more extreme in Defense of the Ancients, where you can make that player just fall behind completely uh, and get destroyed. Meanwhile, you're farming up all this gold. The items in Defense of the Ancients allow you to have huge power spikes, and also, the abilities and the items in Defense of the Ancients are pretty complex. Um, like, for instance, a champion or hero called uh, Broodmother, she has a spider web. So you put the spider web up, you can have up to two at one time, I think, and uh, I think you can have a couple charges of it at one time. Basically, the cooldown refreshes and it can refresh again, so you can use two in su succession. So it not only gives you stealth, it also gives you high movement speed, it also gives you regeneration while you're on it, and it allows you to move over walls, especially the moving over walls component. And I, I suck at Defense of the Ancients too, but understanding those abilities and how to really use them effectively uh, is a bit more complicated than, let's say, Ezreal from League of Legends, which is like, he has a Q, it's a skill shot, so it's like, shoot an arrow this way, it does 200 damage, done. But then the Broodmother ability is like, this thing does four things in one. And if you spend a minute to go ahead and read over it, I mean, you don't have time for that in the middle of a match. You probably shouldn't be doing it in the middle of a match, admittedly. But it does have a learning curve. Um, you walk into Defense of the Ancients, and even if... Uh, I was Gold League in League of Legends. So walking into Defense of the Ancients, play a couple matches, I still get totally destroyed. Um, it's really unforgiving. The other players, uh, I, I would think on average the players who still play Defense of the Ancients too seriously or actively are uh, pretty serious about the mobile genre. So they're experienced in the game. They will smell your weakness and they will farm you for kills. Oh, and another thing that makes it a little bit more unforgiving to noobs, the towers in Defense of the Ancients too aren't really quite as deadly, I think. It's not hard at all to tower dive people, which is where you kill people while they're under the defensive zone of the turret. So you're an underleveled player, you got these other people on the opposing team, they just wait behind the trees, they can be like a few feet from you, but you can't see them because of line of sight, and then they just jump on you with stuns, you can't do anything because the stuns last a long time, and you just die and you feed them another kill. That's how Defense of the Ancients goes if you're a complete noob. So in order to enjoy Defense of the Ancients 2, you really have to have kind of some mental fortitude going into it, knowing that it's going to take a while for you to learn, and knowing that because there are other players who do know what they're doing, um, they're going to exploit that knowledge and kind of crush you the first few times. Now, I don't know exactly what was up with the matchmaking system. It's not like I won 10 matches and then got placed against experts. It's just kind of, that's how I was placed into the game. So I don't know, maybe the average Defense of the Ancients player is just, like, way better. Um, and it's, like, mostly experienced League of Legends X players or something like that. But yeah, um, Defense of the Ancients 2, it is much more similar to the original map. And yeah, I, I think it's basically you focus your game on that 5v5 map, like League of Legends, and it's just that one map. And it really is based a lot on the original Defense of the Ancients. You got um, shopkeepers, like secret shops, that are in the middle of the map, uh, which is something from the original League of Legends doesn't have that. But the original Defense of the Ancients did. So it tries to stay true to the original. Oh, and it also has uh, basically the same champions from the original. Uh, obviously modified to basically be up to modern times, uh, modern abilities, modern computers, all that junk. But I do think the best way to appreciate Defense of the Ancients 2 is to think of it as a high skill cap game. So if you're someone who really values being able to milk as much potential out of understanding the game mechanics and being able to exploit them, Defense of the Ancients might be the way to go. Because in other games like League of Legends, you can be a bad Master Yi, using a champion with a giant katana, 
He's very simple to play. You alpha strike in, and then you auto attack them to death, and it's not that hard to do. Um, you can be a bad mass DU player and still win, uh, but I think it's a bit harder to do that in Defense of the Ancients because uh, things like stuns will really punish you there. The other team will just jump on you and crush you uh, if they think they can do it. So next up we have Smite, which is different than the previous three because in Smite you have a first person point of view. You are looking at the field basically as if you had the eyeballs of the champion in question, which is a completely different perspective than the top-down view of League of Legends Heroes of the Storm and Defense of the Ancients 2. Now, the map, um, and there are a few maps in, in Smite as well. You don't have to play on the 5v5 map. Uh, the map, though, uh, let's just say the 5v5 map, it's not that radically different than the previous games. But when you have that different perspective, it kind of changes everything. Because, well, if you're looking at a tree that's right in front of your face, right? You can't see over that. It's going to it's gonna block your line of sight. You can't even see these shadows uh, that you would be able to see in like Defense of the Ancients 2, where it's like your character has, doesn't have line of sight, but you can technically see the area over. You also can't see what's behind your champion, which is a big deal because that makes it easier to sneak up on somebody. It's like, oh, or they, you just walk up to them and it's like, there's no indication that they're behind you until you start taking a truckload of damage. So by having that different perspective, it changes the game a lot. There are still crazy abilities, like uh, I think it's Thor who has this one to jump up into the air and then choose his landing location. But how that ability plays out is different because you have that first person point of view. So instead of just clicking on somewhere top down, you kind of get that disorienting effect of your character actually moving and the camera moving with it and then choosing your location to land down on. Um, just visually speaking and how uh, that different visuals perspective changes the game makes it different than the other three games. Um, in Smite, you do collect gold, you last hit minions in order to get gold, um, and there's jungle buffs, so in the actual like gameplay, map layout, champions, uh, how you upgrade items, it's not that different than League of Legends and Dota 2, but it, it's all about that different uh, camera perspective. In terms of how the game's philosophy is, Heroes of the Storm is definitely different than the other ones because it has more maps, because it eliminates gold. And it's uh, kind of overall a bit more casual and feeling just kind of you go into a match and it's for fun. Also, Heroes of the Storm matches last less long. But hopefully that gives you guys a really good idea of the differences between League of Legends, Heroes of the Storm, Defense of the Ancients 2, and Smite. Although I mostly play Heroes of the Storm currently, I think that they are all decent games in their own right for different types of audiences. So if any of those sounded interesting to you, I would say go ahead and give it a shot. They're free to play out of the box, and you only have to invest money into the game if you want uh, extras like skins or champion unlocks sooner than you would otherwise get them from the in-game currency. So with that, I've been Dark Skeleton. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.